Secrets to Growing Strawberries Indoors Part 2 In our last video we showed you 6 important tricks to grow perfect strawberries indoors. We have for the last few months enjoyed fresh strawberries almost every day. In this video we will take a closer look at the harvest. We tried to keep track of everything we harvested to see how much we could get out of 10 plants. We will also talk some more about plant care. We are really happy with the results. We have used strawberries in our dessert, in our cereal and on bread for many weeks. As you might remember, we ended our last episode with a kind of a crisis on day 98. pH had suddenly fallen to around 4. Usually when the pH gets low, it's because the plants drink more water than they use nutrients, so the nutrients get more concentrated. This was not the case here, since the EC was still at 1.1. However, note that the water temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. We suspected the hot water and lack of oxygen may have caused a bit of root rot. It can get very hot in the kitchen during summer, this will heat the water and hot water cannot contain as much oxygen. First thing we did was to turn on air condition, which was good for both the plants and humans. Next thing was to change the water in the reservoir. To be sure the plants gets enough oxygen, we also added an air pump with air stones. This is usually not necessary in an NFT system, but with large plants the roots might stem the water flow. And good water flow is important to enrich the water with oxygen. The next day we checked the pH and it dropped again. We use pH plus to adjust the pH. We measure again to check that it's ok. For the next few weeks we measure and adjusted pH regularly until eventually the pH stabilized. This whole situation could probably have been avoided if we kept lower night temperatures. Luckily the plants don't seem to be affected yet. The plants are really starting to put out a lot of flowers now. And large strawberries are starting to form. Strawberries can actually be quite beautiful. The first strawberries are starting to ripen and we are looking forward to harvest. On day 116 we have our first ripe berry. It looks very big and juicy. Almost 30 grams. First taste. The color looks good. It tastes very good, but it should have been even sweeter. It's a bit tangy. As you can see on this image, there is a lot of shadow on the plants. Only the plants in the middle have good light. Since the plants have become so big, we decided to add another light. We add a Cosmoro 40 watt bloom light. This light has a lot of red, which is good for the flowering and fruiting phase. In other words, perfect for the strawberries at this time. The light has three rows, one row with cold white leads, one with warm white and a full row dedicated to red leads. Hopefully, more light will make the berries even sweeter.
As you can see, it gives off a very warm reddish light. We remounted the spider farmer a little farther from the wall. This looks much better. Eight days later, we have a small harvest. Just enough to put on our bread. But at day 127, we have our first big harvest. This time we have enough for dessert. A bowl of our homegrown strawberries with vanilla sauce. In the weeks to come, we harvest many times. This harvest was 198 grams. After some weeks, all the flowers have grown into strawberries and eaten. Normally this would have been the end of our strawberry adventure, but as you might remember, we sowed a remounting strawberry variety. And we were very happy to see that all the plants started to put out new flowers. We are now back to the same amount of fruit as six weeks ago. In this fruiting phase, we are aware that the plants drink a lot of water without using more nutrients. This often leads to high concentration of nutrients and low pH. So in the fruiting phase, we often add just water without nutrients. This will decrease EC and increase pH back to normal levels. We harvest again and again. We keep track of the harvest in our log. On the 10th of November we notice brown spots on the leaves. The flowers are also drying up. We recognize this from earlier growth and we are sure it's due to low humidity. The outside temperature is now around minus 8 degrees Celsius. When this cold air gets heated up inside, the relative humidity drops drastically. We should have increased the use of the humidifier as it got colder outside. But at this point we had become a bit lazy and wanted to start a new project. We think that we could have gotten even more fruits out of the plants if we had increased the use of the, the humidifier. So after 231 days we decided to end the project. We were surprised to see that the roots didn't take up much space. We summarize the total edible yield. A 
about three and a half kilos. If we divide by 400 grams, we get about nine standard Norwegian strawberry baskets. Not bad for a small kitchen system. To sum it up, remember the most important things. Plenty of light, the right humidity, cooler night temperatures, and don't overdo the nutrients. I hope you liked our video and that we inspired somebody to try the same. Remember to like and subscribe.